Hello, and welcome to this introductory video on installing Oracle Linux. After watching this video, you will learn where to download the Oracle Linux operating system software. You'll learn about installing Oracle Linux using VirtualBox, followed by completing the initial setup of Oracle Linux, and finally you'll learn how to sign in and update your installation. You can download Oracle Linux from the Oracle Software Delivery Cloud at edelivery.oracle.com. Once there, sign in or create a new account. Once signed in, you then search for Oracle Linux. Enter Oracle Linux in the search box and hit enter. From the results listed, click on the latest release of Oracle Linux. The latest release was added to your downloads queue. Scroll up and click on view items and then continue. Next, click the down arrow under platforms and languages. Select your platform architecture. For this video, let's select x86 64-bit and then click continue. It is suggested to review the terms and restrictions before downloading the software. After reviewing, click the checkbox to accept the license agreement followed by clicking on the continue button. Let's ignore the survey. Right click on the link and select save link as to save locally. The ISO image file is quite large at 9 gigabytes, so it may take some time to download. The installation menu is the first window to appear during an installation. The default option of test this media and install Oracle Linux is automatically selected within 60 seconds. Using your arrow keys, select the install option to use the graphical installation program to install Oracle Linux. For this installation, we're using VirtualBox to install Oracle Linux. After a short while, the Welcome to Oracle Linux Windows appears. In the box on the left, select the language to use for the installation. The language becomes the default language for the operating system. The language is also used to target the time zone configuration later during in the installation process. In the box on the right, select the locale. Scroll down if necessary and click Continue to display the installation summary screen. The interface is a hub and spoke model rather than the linear model used in previous releases of Oracle Linux. You can select any option in any order. Only those options with the warning icon must be configured. Let's take a quick look at each option. First, select keyboard from the installation summary. The language you selected in the welcome screen is listed as the keyboard layout in the left pane. To add support for any additional keyboards for your system, click the plus button at the bottom of the screen. To delete a keyboard layout, select the layout in the left pane and click the minus button at the bottom of the screen. Click done to return to the installation summary screen. Let's select language support from the installation summary screen. Select the screen to install support for additional locales and language dialects. Select the language in the box on the left or type in the search box and then select one or more locales in the box on the right. Click Done to return to the installation summary screen. Next, let's select time and date. You can select the appropriate time zone by selecting country and city closest to the location of your system. At the bottom of the screen, you can manually adjust the date and time as needed. Click Done to return to the installation summary screen. Let's now view the installation source screen. For this installation, we will install from a local source the ISO file that was downloaded and now auto-detected. We'll now return back to the installation summary by clicking Done. From the Selecting the Software to Install screen, you can specify which software packages you want to install. Short descriptions are provided in the software selection panes, giving input into which selections are appropriate for various environments. The server with GUI-based environment is the only environment that displays a graphical desktop when the system boots. All other base environments boot into a command line environment. By default, the server with GUI-based environment installs the GNOME desktop. For each base environment, you can select from a list of specific add-ons in the right pane. Click Done to return to the installation summary screen. Next, select installation destination from the installation summary screen. From this screen, you can specify where to install the software and configure the storage. The local standard disk section displays the storage devices directly connected to your computer. Each disk is marked with its device name, size, and available space. 
Let's use automatic partitioning for now, but you can also manually partition Oracle Linux. Click Done to return to the installation summary screen. Because this is an introductory video on Oracle Linux, we'll save KDump for a more advanced video in the future and select Network and Host Name from the installation summary screen. From here, you can configure networking features for your system. At the bottom of this window, you can also set the host name for your system. To enable a selected network interface, you can move the switch to the on position. By default, the IP settings for a network interface are configured automatically. You can always configure the network after the installation is complete. For now, we'll accept the defaults provided. Once again, click Done to return to the installation summary screen. Let's select Security Policy from the Installation Summary screen to simply review the default security policies. As shown by default, security policies are turned on but can be turned off by clicking the switch. Not all systems require a security policy, but you can apply a security policy if it is required. Click the Done button again to return to the Installation Summary screen. Let's click on Root Password under the User Settings. The root user is the system administrator for the operating system. On this screen, enter your new password in the root password field. Your entry does not display the characters for security. There is an indication about the strength of the password. Enter the same password into the confirm field to ensure it is set correctly. After you set the root password, click done. If you set a weak password, you have to click done twice. Let's now go ahead and create an initial user. Click user creation from the installation summary screen. Enter the full name of the local user account you want to create, in this case, Alice. We'll use the full name Alice for the username also. Let's select Make this user administrator to be able to administer the system. Enter the password twice. Again, there's an indication about the strength of the password. Click Done to return to the installation summary screen. Let's now begin the installation by clicking Begin Installation from the Installation Summary. During the installation, a status bar shows the ongoing progress. Let's assume the installation is a success and fast forward to completion. After the installation configuration process is complete, a complete message appears and the configuration screen prompts you to reboot. Click the Reboot System button. Again, we'll fast forward to the server with GUI environment appears. Next, select the license information option and accept the license agreement by clicking the box next to I accept the license agreement as well as done. Finally, click finish configuration in the initial setup window. When the sign in window appears, click the user you created during the installation and then enter the password and click sign in. The first time you sign in, you are taken through the GNOME initial setup in which you can configure the language, input sources, privacy, and if necessary, online accounts. When these selections are complete, click Start using Oracle Linux Server. You can upgrade software by clicking the software icon in the left menu bar or by starting a terminal window and running the command sudo dnf upgrade. Your system will download updates and then automatically reboot. Sign back in with your account information and your Oracle Linux system is ready and up to date. Oracle provides an extensive number of resources which you can use to learn more about the subject and others. Look for additional videos on Oracle Linux and other topics using the links shown. This concludes the video. Thank you for watching. <music>